Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazarov's chess channel and welcome to our Gary Kasparov series. So in this series we're following Gary's life and his chess career and we're back now in the 1984 World Championship match between Anatoly Karpov and Gary Kasparov. Gary Kasparov was of course the challenger, Anatoly Karpov was uh, the world champion and so far we have covered three games in which uh, Anatoly Karpov won all of them so it was so far a comfortable three-point lead for Anatoly Karpov against Kasparov. We're now in the game 9, in which Anatoly Karpov played with white pieces. Again, Gary Kasparov will try his Tarash defense uh, as black. And this game will again show uh, why they used to call Anatoly Karpov the ball constrictor in chess, because this game again shows really the great positional skills, how you should basically apply the basic principles in chess. When you do that, then it's really hard for your opponent maybe to find some tactical possibilities, to find some tactical shots, if you find maybe be a good good setup and Gary Kasparov as I said had his problems uh, in the beginning of the super match he really didn't find any any counter-attack possibility so let's check out now the game nine uh, we have d4 played by Karpov d5 c4 e6 knight to f3 uh, c5 so far the queen's gambit declined but now uh, Kasparov goes into the Taraj defense and here uh, Karpov takes c takes d5 basically uh, this game will be a repetition of our previous game that we have covered uh, similar position will apply but of course with a different uh, continuation but again Gary Kasparov tried uh, to make his uh, make his Tarash defense which was, was I think a very risky choice to get an isolated pawn in the beginning against as I said such a such a nice positional player like Karpov so e takes d5 g3 knight to f6 bishop to g2 uh, so far the main theory uh, bishop to e7 Castling, castling, and now knight to c3. So, bringing all of our knights, of course, um, on the most natural squares here. Kasparov plays also knight to c6, and we have bishop to g5. Here, Kasparov again takes c takes d4. We have knight to d4, and now h6, kicking away the bishop again. As I said, the repetition of our previous analyzed game, uh, bishop to e3, and here, rook to e8, played by Kasparov. We have now queen to b3. This, uh, again, uh, the same repetition also by Karpov. Uh, he found maybe here a good opening line against the Tarash. Uh, first, he gets his queen out. He has now the rook connection. He has finished uh, his development. He can now play much more freely with his rooks on, on the first rank. He can occupy, of course, these very important files. Maybe here the C file and also the D file. We have now, uh, from Black's perspective, this isolated pawn. So the main goal about... Uh, uh, this isolated pawn situation is to create a blockade and uh, the blockade idea is the best against such uh, weak pawns like that uh, what black wants to do for instance is to advance the pawn somehow uh, so that's why white pieces are a little bit uh, set up in this uh, defensive defensive setup here like uh, bishop to e3 good knight to d4 never allowing uh, this pawn to make further progress so from black's perspective black is trying to advance the pawn from white's perspective, white is trying to block the pawns. As simple as that. So here, knight to f5 uh, by Kasparov. Again, he's trying the same line like in the previous game, attacking the queen. We have queen to c2, and now bishop to g4. Again, a repetition. And again, knight to f5 played by Karpov. We have rook to c8, and now bishop to d4. Here, uh, Karpov deviates uh, from the previous game. In the previous game, he took uh, knight takes e7, and uh, then he tried rook to d1 ideas. In the game, bishop to d4, again with the same idea uh, with getting our bishop on the very active square we're uh, again creating this blockade idea what black can do maybe is attack the knight, uh, attack the bishop with knight to c6 but still we have opportunities then to play first maybe knight takes e7 take out um, uh, take out the bishop and after knight to c6 rook to d1 uh, protecting our bishop and still continuing our blockade idea on the square d4 so bishop to c5 we have bishop to c5 uh, rook to c5 knight to e3 attacking the bishop uh, here uh, kasparov uh, escapes with the bishop on e6 even d4 here is maybe a possibility as i said uh, here karpov left a little bit the defense of the d4 maybe advancing the pawn is possible of course uh white can counterplay with the move um, rook to d1 but maybe we could try now knight to c4 uh, it's i think maybe a playable line for knight to c4 rook to c4 maybe you lose the pawn here but still we can attack maybe uh, queen to b8 and attack uh, here the weak b2 pawn so at least we have made i think some kind of a progress we have made some kind of an activity some kind of a dyna new dynamics in the game uh, in the game bishop to e6 played by Kasparov what we can notice now this pawn is still weak and the problem is now the bishop or the life bishop uh, is only 
a protective piece it's only part of the pawn chain and uh, you should never have bishops like this uh, we are using our bishop just to defend one particular pawn it's not a good choice uh, we want to play much more free with our bishop so here in the game rook to d1 played by Karpov now he applies basically the main strategy against the nice little pawn again he wants to create the block it so the queen to c8 uh, Kasparov gets out of the range he wants now maybe finally to play rook to d8 and maybe then after watch d4 we have a queen to a4 uh, rook to d8 then again rook to d3 simply attacking further the, uh, the d5 pawn we want to of course create a rook battery on the d file so uh, a6 uh, here maybe rook to d7 uh, slightly better at least we are trying uh, to build some kind of a compact position here after rook to d1 again we could try maybe queen to d8 uh, again trying to protect simply this uh, this pawn on d5 and try maybe in some occasions if the position allows it maybe to advance it but again a6 uh, Kasparov tries a counter attack and Karpov plays rook to d1 anyway he has now basically the pieces on the best course two centralized knights the rooks on the d file the bishop is on a very active diagonal the queen is very flexible the queen can move all over the board the queen can come to b4 even d4 is a possibility uh, for uh, uh, making our block it so here knight to c4 uh, played by uh, kasparov we have knight takes c4 you have to of course take with the rook you cannot take with the pawn because of the tension on the d file and here uh, karpov plays queen to a5 what he wants to do now is to make again further uh, um, further progress on the blockade here around the square d4 so rook to c5 queen to b6 and again rook to d7 uh, if you try rook to c6 again i think queen to d4 is perfectly fine we have still uh, we still have our blockade and now even e4 could be a possibility i think this could be a very interesting idea because we have now really really an intense battery on the d file so uh, rook to d7 uh, the rook to d4 we have queen to c7 and here uh, Ka uh, Karpov simply takes he undermines the pressure here simplifies the position and again I hope you realize Kasparov didn't got any dynamic position he didn't get some kind of an active play uh, okay he's playing with the black pieces but I've seen many times Kasparov playing very very actively with his uh, with his black pieces here after trades of queens basically it's a one-way ticket because uh, still I think uh, why, uh, black has the worries about this isolated pawn black cannot create uh, attacking possibilities here on the c file because this knight is restricting this so it's very 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 bad position here for for black so h3 uh, played by karpov you see a very nice prophylactic move never allow again this bishop to come on g4 uh, where you could attack the e2 pawn or maybe the rook on d1 in the game uh, h5 played by kasparov and now we have a3 what Kasp uh, what Karpov does now is uh, he's getting all of our uh, all of his pawns on dark squares, which is very important when you have this bishop strategy. Uh, when we uh, we have noticed that uh, Black is of course is bad bishop situation because he has many pawns uh, here on light course. So what Karpov is trying to do to get out of the range of this potential attack by the light score bishop he brings all of his pawns on dark scores and that's how you should basically play there is this relation i've mentioned a thousand times on my youtube chess channel there is this the re relation between bishops and pawns when you have a light score bishop you want to have your pawns on dark scores when you have a dark score bishop you want to have your pawns on light scores as simple as that so you see now that's why here white has a dominant game white has a comfortable game white doesn't have to even uh, calculate so much in this continuation white just in, uh, just needs to bring all of his pawns on dark horse of course so far the knight is hanging that's not the point but now maybe escaping with the knight e3 knight to e2 maybe something like knight to f4 then b4 and similar ideas it's really easier for for white to find the best next move so g6 play by kasparov we have e3 again a new uh, move on dark squares uh, here king to g7 king to h2 rook to c4 Four, bishop to f3 we have b5 and now king to g2 rook to c5 we have rook to c4 and now again rook to c4 rook to d4 again a simplification idea again uh karpov is not allowing kasparov to spread his tactical wings he forces again through new trades of rooks in the game kasparov of course maneuvers the queen more uh, maneuvers his king because we are now in an end game stage you have to play actively with your king bishop to e2 rook to d4 e takes d4 and we what we can notice now look at this pawn structure all really all pawns by um 
Gary Kasparov are on light squares. The bishop is a light square bishop, so it's a bad bishop situation now that um, uh, Karpov forced here a uh, really simplified game in which I think white light square bishop can play much more fully. It's a huge, huge uh, and important strategic element that Kas uh, Karpov, of course, realized. Here, black is already in troubles, although it's really hard to win this game. It's not the point about that. You have to struggle here for win from white perspective, but I think the position when it gets more and more simplified it's i'm not seeing good ways how black 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 uh, really should win this one so king to e7 we have knight to a2 bishop to c8 knight to b4 we have king to uh, d6 and now f3 uh cutting off this very important square for the knight we have uh, knight to the g8 we have h4 again a pawn move on dark square so here the knight to h6 we have uh, king to f2 uh, knight to f5 and now very important move uh, knight to c2 protecting our pawn and now it's time to attack this knight and we, we when we take out this knight on uh, f5 then we could maybe occupy here the weak squares in the position they are of course the weak c5 and the weak e5 square with our knight so f6 we have bishop to d3 uh, g5 and here uh, karpov immediately takes the knight which is in some occasions very risky uh, very risky because uh, the bishop is a long range piece and uh, we shouldn't basically go into end games when we have all the pawns on, on both sides of the board but this example is a perfect one uh, why is it possible so because uh, as i said many pawns are on light squares so that's why it's not a problem about that that uh, we have pawns on both sides but these are clear targets because uh, the bishop is only all, uh, only used as a protective piece for instance this uh, this pawn could be a target if we play for instance something like b4 uh, and block here the queen side then maybe the a6 pawn could be a long-term weakness so after move bishop to f5 knight to e3 bishop to b1 and here karpov cements the position on dark squares this pawns will stay here on light squares which is a huge thing they are really weak and the the king and the bishop have only uh this um, this function to defend this pawns in the game g takes h4 play kasparov it was a mistake because um, he should have proceeded maybe something like bishop to d3 after something like g4 maybe trading off more pawns okay it's not the point about that here white can grab back back the pawn but now even uh, here after g5 we can tr uh, try a trade of pieces the position is more and more simplified although still we have these weaknesses this uh, light square pawns but i i don't think that you can attack them only with the knight you have to have some kind of a support with your king so that's why i think this would be a drawish line but carp uh, after the move g takes h4 basically kasparov fell into karpov's trap because uh karpov simply continued with the move knight to g2 he sacrificed the pawn but uh, he gets now a very very active king very nice endgame technique here by anatoly karpov king to g3 uh, king to e6 knight to uh, f4 we have knight takes h5 and now again the knight comes very actively into the game and here bishop to c2 play by kasparov now king to h5 and now bishop to uh, d1 maybe bishop to f5 is slightly better at least uh, we're um, defending this pawn but I think maybe king to h6 could happen uh, maybe then king to g7 uh, white king is much more active in the game Kar uh, Kasparov try bishop to d1 but again uh, Kaspar uh, Karpov gets a very very active king king to g6 we have uh, uh, king to uh, e7 and now we can take out this pawn uh, that are the troubles when you have too many pawns on the same so uh, colored squares here after the move knight to d5 king to uh, e6 was played now the fork you see this pawn is also lost okay you can grab down this pawn but here uh karpov takes another pawn which was i think also a very cool move because he can now protect this pawn on d4 which is really incredible because he gets an extra tempo with the move king to f4 the bishop has to move and now king to e3 very very nice move in the game king to f5 was played knight to c5 uh, here bishop to c6 knight to d3 and here bishop to g2 if you try king to b3 it's not a problem because we'll simply play a king to d2 okay you can maybe grab this pawn but now after king to c3 we can notice that this uh, king is out of game and now we could play something like knight to f4 and simply 
push our pawn further uh, we will promote it or black it will at least uh, have to give up his life square bishop for a pawn and then we're continuing the end game with knight and the pawn against the pawn and it's of course winning here for white in the game knight to d3 uh, here uh, kasparov tried bishop to g2 but now knight to uh, e5 king to c3 we have knight to uh, g6 here the knight again comes on a very active square threatening here the fork on d6 in the game uh, kasparov tried bishop to g2 but now comes this very important move knight to d6 you have to uh, get your uh, king here and we can grab now this pawn uh, you can cannot take the pawn that's the most important thing here knight to d6 and in this position uh, Kasparov resigned because the only pawn that you can take is of course the a3 pawn but now we can push this pawn further we can push this pawn further and then also to b7 again uh, white has uh, pardon me black has to give up the bishop we can take the bishop and we're continuing then uh, with a completely winning end game here for white so very very cool game play by uh, Karpov it wasn't again maybe one of the most tactical games but it was a beautiful beautiful end game um, with this uh, pawn sacrifice motif to get a very active king with this knight versus bishop very instructive endgame because you see how you can get problems if you have uh, for instance light square pawns and you have a light square bishop this light square complex uh, that uh, kasparov built really costed him in the game and it was a 4-0 lead for Anatoly Karpov in the World Championship match against Anat uh, Gary Kasparov. Incredible, incredible stuff what happened back in 1984. So, okay, I hope that you enjoyed this game. I really enjoyed it a lot. A really nice strategy supplied by Karpov and also some middle game and end game strategies. If you want to see more from the Gary Kasparov series, check out my uh, series so far. Here's the link. And if you want to see maybe the best chess games of all time, check out my best chess games of all time series. Here's also the link. And if you like this content, you can also subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and uh, chess is the best of course